One of the questions I get asked most often is what is the best country I've traveled to? And even though that's impossible to answer, I've decided to unveil the top 24 places that will redefine your travel bucket list in 2024. From exotic landscapes to cultural wonders, I've curated a list that promises adventure, relaxation, and unforgettable experiences. Warning, some of these might surprise you. So, grab your passport, pack your bags, and join me as we explore the must-visit destinations that will make 2024 a year of incredible wonderlust. Let the countdown begin! Most of my life has been about travel, and this year has been especially exciting as I hit my 50 country mark. One of those countries being Norway. Norway is amazing if you want to have a chance at seeing the northern lights, but even better if you stay at Lingen North. Glass igloos with a 180 degree or 360 degree view of the sky. We got especially lucky because the only night that we were there, we got an amazing Aurora Borealis display. For every destination, I'm going to give you a top tip from personal experience. In Norway, it would definitely have to be get a cold resistant casing for your iPhone or any camera that you're using so that you can leave your phone or camera out on long exposure the whole night to capture the Aurora Borealis. As most of you know, African safaris are a huge part of my life and I spent over a year altogether living in Zimbabwe filming animals, filming wildlife, and filming safaris. That's why number 23 just has to be a safari in Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe surprised me in so many ways and I know that when you go you will get the authentic safari experience and not the touristy kind that you get in other countries in Africa. My top tip here would definitely be hire a guide who has a walking license and do a walking safari. This brings you so much closer to the animals to the nature and you'll really feel a deeper connection that way. If you want more tips on how to visit Zimbabwe, make sure to comment below because I have got so many that I'll need a whole extra video just for that. For all of you city lovers, number 22 is the perfect place to go to. Madrid is one of my personal favorite European cities. It is somewhere where I would actually see myself living one day. It has the perfect mix of the best food, the best architecture, just everything combined in one easily walkable city. I love so much about Madrid, but one of my favorite places there has to be Temple of Debod. This is a place that not even many locals know about, and it's actually an Egyptian ruin that was brought from Egypt into the center of Madrid. Number 21 is Cartagena. I started my year in Cartagena, and I would go back within a heartbeat. Cartagena has been such an amazing new discovery for me, and I know you're gonna love it too if you go. I actually did a whole guide on Cartagena, and I believe it's one of my best videos just because Cartagena is so incredibly photogenic, and there's so much to do there. My top tip for Cartagena would be stay within the walled city so everything is walking distance, and also do a salsa class. Number 20 is a destination that I visited about seven years ago, but I still can't get out of my head, and I'm dying to go back and that is some of the most beautiful views I have ever seen in my life, the Canadian Rockies. Everything is so spectacular, so colorful, and also not as touristy as you might think. I went in July and it was a mind-blowing experience. I got incredible pictures and my top tip here would be to hike to Lake Peto. The view that you will get and the color of the lake that you're gonna see in front of you will blow your mind and you're gonna wanna stay for a while just to take it all in. Cape Town is another one that I keep thinking about and keep wanting to go back to. Cape Town has many different areas to explore, so I really do believe that there's something for everyone there. When it's winter season here, it's summer season there, so that's another reason to go. But for me, the top tip of Cape Town would be not only to hike up Table Mountain, which was a grueling but very rewarding experience, but also to go to Boulders Beach where you'll see wild penguins just coming right up to you. What I did with the help of our tour guide there was I actually went a little bit to the left of the main parking so away from all the tourists and you don't get all the people but you still get all the penguins. Number 18 is a new discovery of mine and this is a whole new country that I visited back in June this year and it's Tunisia. I particularly enjoyed Sidi Bou Said in Tunisia because it reminded me of Santorini but with a whole new African flair added to it. Sidi Bou Said is a very small village and you'll easily walk through it in an hour, maybe you can stop for lunch but my tip here would be to combine it with the historical city of Carthage, 
where you can see some of the world's best preserved historical ruins. I know this is a bit cliche, but I just had to add the Maldives in here. I went to the Maldives in 2016 and my stay there was truly perfect. I couldn't have asked for more. It was actually my best friend's birthday, so I took her there as a surprise. What I think I would recommend is staying at a Lux resort. Lux is a hotel chain that has an added quirk to it and they have fun elements to them. And while some prefer classic luxury, this is definitely for the more lighthearted tourist in mind. As some of you know, I spent many years living in Budapest when I was younger, so coming back to Budapest feels like partly home and partly me exploring it all over again as an adult. Budapest has changed so much over the years, it's become more young, more vibrant, more quirky, and for that reason I can highly recommend it to you if you're about to visit in 2024. I think my recommendation would be to go between the months of May and September when the weather is gorgeous. I go back and I visit and I realize what a beautiful oasis it is, basically in the center of the city. Recently a lot of my friends have been traveling to Capri so I'm finding myself sending them all of my recommendation back from when I went in 2020. Capri was an incredible trip. I enjoyed so many different aspects of it, but I think my favorite part was the boat tour that I did on the first day. This is so that you can see all the caves and so that you can see Capri from a different perspective, from the perspective of the sea. This truly opens your eyes to what a magical place it is and what a surreal little island it is. Marrakesh! This is a trip that I really enjoyed, not only because of the flavors and the vibes that Marrakesh gave me, but also because of the surprise that I got when I went to the Atlas Mountains outside of the city center. This is where I discovered not only Richard Branson's property, but also these astounding views. There's just so much to see that might not be the case in central Marrakesh that I highly recommend you explore both sides. Marrakesh itself is obviously fantastic, it's gorgeous everywhere you look, everything is so detail-oriented. Whenever I do a Q&A on Instagram, I think one of the questions that I get asked the most is what is the most beautiful beach you've ever been to? And over and over again, I keep thinking of Whitsunday Islands in Australia because that for me was probably not only the most spectacular beach, but one of the most stunning views overall. I took a helicopter tour. We flew over these secluded beaches with swirls in the sand and from above, it just looked like the most surreal sight in the world. So we landed on this beach and it was just myself and my friend and the helicopter pilot and that's it. Whitsunday Islands is a place that's still raw in my opinion. So for me, if you want to really get the feeling that you're exploring a beach and not a tourist destination, go to Whitsunday Islands. Number 12, I'm gonna give you the top tip actually before I say the name of the place and the top tip would be bring your warmest clothes and your extra layers and do not trust the forecast. This place is Patagonia. When we went glacier hiking in Patagonia and hiking up mountains to discover secret waterfalls, which was amazing by the way, I sadly trusted the weather forecast, which said 10 degrees. But what I didn't take into account is the glacial winds. So I definitely wish that I had brought at least three, four more layers with me, you know, gloves, hat, thermal socks, the whole thing. So definitely don't make the same mistake when you go, but when you do go, make sure that you explore both Perito Moreno Glacier and then go to the other side and hike up mountains in El Chalten, one of which has a secret waterfall. And since we're on that side of the world, I would love for you guys to visit Buenos Aires in 2024. Buenos Aires is one of those places that I think you can go to over and over again and discover something new each time. I fell head over heels in love with Buenos Aires when I first went a few years ago and now I go back at least once a year and every time that I go back I just find new things to love. If it is your first time in Buenos Aires then do check out the Palermo area which is an enormous park. There's also a lot of people doing sports, a lot of nice restaurants in the area. It's one of those areas that you can really see yourself living in. Now Buenos Aires is also a short flight away from places like Iguazu Falls, Mendoza, and other places in Argentina that are really worth a visit. So have a think because I do believe that Buenos Aires should be on everyone's bucket list at least once in their lives. By the way, I hope you've been enjoying this video so far and if you have, please do hit the subscribe button
button before we head on to number 10. Number 10 is New Orleans. New Orleans has been an absolute gem for me to discover and not only because of the amazing food and the Mardi Gras culture and all the parades and the architecture and the history but also because of the music. New Orleans is an incredibly musical place. I actually decided to go to a jazz bar one of the evenings that I was there not knowing what to expect and it turned out to be the best music I had ever heard in any bar anywhere and you'll find something like that everywhere in New Orleans, not just in jazz bars, but everywhere on the streets you will find singers, saxophone players, choirs, gospels. I mean, it is a place that lives and breathes music. So I really enjoy that and it definitely gives you new life when you go. Why aren't more people talking about Matera? Matera in Italy is one of the most ancient cities that you can still see. It is over 2,000 years old and it looks like a Flintstone town. It is one of the most surreal sights that you can see in Europe and it should 100% be on your bucket list for 2024. Matera is fascinating and it is so incredibly special to walk around those little tiny streets and feel stones and structures that are thousands of years old. Now, my tip here would be probably go in either the month of May or the month of September or October because peak summer tends to be really, really hot. And if we're talking about heat, let's talk about island life and let's go to Mauritius. Mauritius for me is one of the most incredible places in the world that you can visit. It's got a really special energy to it. Mauritius has amazing people. It's got some of the most luxurious hotels and it's got some amazing wildlife and nature as well. Even though I spent 10 days in Mauritius filming a global child episode with the Mauritian Tourism Board, I think that my favorite activity would still have to be swimming with dolphins. I had no expectations when we went out at 5 in the morning with vitamin C to find wild dolphins to swim with, but we found so many of them and just being in the water surrounded by them and keep in mind that these are wild dolphins, they're not trained in any way. So that experience for me has been a huge tick off my bucket list and I think it should be on yours too. And if you're in the mood for a more luxurious holiday, possibly in Europe, I recommend staying at a French chateau. There's a lot of them around the area where I live. Chateau Berne is not only a wine estate, but it is also a big chateau with many more modern houses scattered around it for guests to stay in. It's got hiking trails, it's got a swimming pool, it's got activities, basically anything that you can imagine, including a delicious restaurant. What I would suggest is staying in one of the more modern houses when you go instead of in the main building, have lunch there, have dinner there, do a wine discovery or a hike the next day, and then see the surrounding area, which is also beautiful. Number six is Singapore. Singapore is a vibrant mix of cultures, of history, of architecture, forward-thinking architecture at that. You will absolutely love Singapore. When I went, I was fortunate enough to stay in the Marina Bay Sands Hotel, which I was really happy about because not only did I get access to the famous infinity pool, but it's actually really well located so that you can walk to all of the main attractions and rarely need to take a taxi. Singapore is also a really great city for a layover. Most flights to Asia actually stop over in Singapore, which means that the next time you book a flight with a Singapore stopover, make sure to exit for at least 48 hours and see what all the fuss is about. Number five is Dubrovnik. Dubrovnik is in Croatia and possibly not a place that a lot of people would think of visiting when they're in Europe. But Dubrovnik is actually pretty fascinating. It's got an old town from the 16th century encircled by city walls and actually one of the first commercial pharmacies from the 14th century. Moreover, it's next to some beautiful beaches and next to Montenegro, which is a country that I also recommend visiting so you can easily drive from one to the other. Dubrovnik is exceptionally well located, it's walkable, you can easily explore it in a day. It just encompasses everything into one tiny space for you to explore as part of a Europe trip this coming summer. The British Virgin Islands for me is such a special part of the world. It really does feel like you're in an episode of Lost where nature has taken over again, where you're at the mercy of the surroundings 
you have been caught up and swallowed up by the most beautiful sea, the most beautiful ocean, the most beautiful plants, butterflies, iguanas, flamingos, and honestly there is no place I'd rather be every single time that I go to the British Virgin Islands. It still feels very raw and very untouched and that's partly why I love it so much. So if you do come to the British Virgin Islands in 2024, the best season to go is probably from November up until May and I strongly recommend that you take a boat and you visit all the different islands. You visit Virgin Gorda, uh, Tortola, you visit all the caves, you visit the baths and Savannah Bay which is my personal favorite beach there which I even have a whole vlog about. And speaking of beaches, another one that I will never forget is Cala Rosa in Favignana. Favignana and Maratimo are two of the islands right off of Sicily. And to get there, you can either take a boat or take a ferry. But once you get there, please do rent a scooter because getting from beach to beach is going to be a nightmare if you don't. We are very lucky that we actually found the last scooter available on the island that day. And what we saw when we arrived at Cala Rosa absolutely blew my mind. Marettimo, on the other hand, which can be reached by ferry or by boat from Favignana, is a lot less touristy, has water that resembles green a lot more than turquoise blue, and the best thing to do in Marettimo is to take a tour on a traditional boat that goes around the island within a few hours with a local who will show you all the caves. Getting so close to number one! Number two for me is Corsica. Corsica is so naturally beautiful and so well geared towards any type of tourist. Corsica is an incredible place to spend a week during the summer and I highly recommend that you also take a helicopter tour because Corsica is a lot bigger than it looks and the only way to see everything is actually from above. Are you guys ready for number one? Do you have any idea what it might be? Number one, my top discovery of the past few years has been Jordan. Jordan is somewhere where I visited this year and honestly, I was speechless. The energy and the vibe that I felt in Jordan, I hadn't felt anywhere else in a long time. This particularly is true for Petra. My day in Petra was, I had no words. At the end of the day, I did not know what to say because of how awestruck I was of what I was seeing around me. It is better than it is on pictures. It is more spectacular than anything you can ever imagine. And when you see Petra in front of you, and even when you see Wadi Rum Desert in front of you, it feels like you're on Mars and you're not even sure if the place is real or not. My top tip for seeing Jordan and seeing Petra more than anything is to get a local guide who can show it to you without tourists. Yes, this is possible no matter what time you get there and it all depends on the guide. So if you want to see exactly how that's done and exactly how you can go about seeing Petra without any tourists and have the place to yourself, check out this video.